Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. Uh, here we're going to do a quick problem just to illustrate Kirchhoff's laws. I don't want to do too many just on this particular thing because we're going to use Kirchhoff's laws in almost every circuit problem we do. But I found this problem to be pretty cool, so I want to share it with you uh, and kind of illustrate a few things. So let's say that we have a node here. You know, these are things that we deal with all the time in circuits. We have a node, um, and there's four branches kind of coming into this node, all right? And so I'm going to label them. Um, this one we're going to call I sub 1. This one we're going to call I sub 2. This one we're going to call I sub 3. This one we're going to call I sub 4. And here we've drawn them all going into the node, but you all know from now, dealing with node voltage, that if we solve this, some of these things might be negative or positive. Basically what it means is the current going into a node must equal the current going out of a node. So we've drawn them all this way, but you know some of these might actually be going the other way once we solve the problem. Um, but for this particular case, we're drawing them in this way because we want to basically use Kirchhoff current law to solve the following. But here we're given the fact that I sub 1 is 100 times cosine of omega t plus 25 degrees, and that's amps, of course. I2 is 100 times cosine of omega t plus 145 degrees, that's, of course, in amps. And I3 is 100 cosine omega t minus 95 degrees, and that's in amps. And the question is, I4 is equal to what? I4 is equal to what? Now, if we didn't use phasers, this would be incredibly um, tricky to solve, really, because I1 is a cosine, and even if I give you the frequency, I mean, I just have omega t here because it, it doesn't really particularly